Now, let's get the latest on the memorial celebrations. Panina Karibe is standing by in the Rwandan capital, Kigali. Panina, take us through the day's events and tell us more about the mood there. Well, for me, it's a very somber mood here in the capital. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, starting tomorrow, we do understand that everything will come to a halt. Entertainment, sports will be closed. Businesses, particularly tomorrow, will be closed. So of course, they'll reopen on Tuesday. And we understand also that during that one week, starting tomorrow all the way till Sunday, advertising as well in the television and radio stations are, are, are also stopped, at least for that one week. So a very somber mood. I can tell you for sure that people, you can already see that people already start to reflect on what took that 20 years ago you just talk to somebody and get this sense of remembrance of what the country went through now today we started uh, we had the church services held countrywide in memory of course of those who lost their lives in these mass killings international dignitaries as well have started arriving as you heard in Jane's story the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon did arrive late this morning he met with the president of Rwanda Paul Kagame after which he went and met some survivors of the genocide but let's just get more now more insights into this event this whole week, we, we're here with John Ruchahana of the National Unity and Reconciliation Commission. Thank you for joining us. And let me start by asking you, how successful has the reconciliation process been? Well, I think the reconciliation of Rwanda has been successful in a sense that we've been able to seek, get invigorated and encouraged to rediscover our, our identity. And we are also seeking to engage the responsibility of our history, at the same time get more encouraged, even more encouraged for taking responsibility for our destiny. We made a mistake, but we can't make a mistake again. We burnt our fingers, we lost our beloved ones, we killed each other at the false theories implanted in us and uh, brought into us, foreign as it were, and uh, adopted it, swallowed it, and caused us the havoc. But we want to take care and responsibility for our destiny. The, the church is accused of playing a role in the genocide. The war, of course, people who got killed in those churches. We've seen some of the priests of, of being, being tried and convicted of genocide crimes. You're a bishop yourself. And I just want to get from you how the church has managed to rebuild the trust with the people. Thank you so much. It's not only the church. It's sadly, yes, it is true that the churches have been a part and parcel of the of the policies of the persecution and didn't actually take responsibility to have a prophetic voice against those policies and against the genocide itself. But the church, like any other institutions in Rwanda, are all sorry, repentant, ashamed and embarrassed of what happened. But today, everything is being renewed in a sense of building a new nation and a new Rwanda. Well, let's talk about uh, moving forward, of course. Um, and I, I just wanted to get from you about the, the, the significance of this commemoration. Every time the commemoration comes to a close or every time we get to the month of April, emotions start to run high here in Rwanda. People start to, you know, just remember what, it, what happened back in, uh, in 1994. And of course, there's been a school of thought that argues that this opens up people to what happened, opening up old wounds, so to speak. Does it still make sense? to take back to take people back to what happened or should the country now move forward with necessarily having these commemorations well thank you Penny. I think uh, you understand that uh, when we move forward we move forward as a people with uh, with our with uh, with the sense of who we are with a sense of our past present and engage the future with the reality and the knowledge and the concept and the sense of who we are and we don't want to leave anything of us behind us. You see, psychologically, when we remember, we heal our wounds. When we remember, we heal each other. When we remember, we mourn, we mourn our, our beloved ones. It's only 20 years ago and the memories are too fresh. The orphans still miss their parents. The widows still miss their husbands. We miss our neighbors. We, need, we miss all we need. And, and our remembrance does not discourage us, but it even encourages us even more and, and, and encourages and, 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 and put, puts all the courage in us to be able to move, 
with all determination we need to move with to catch up with what we need to do for the reconstruction of, of, of the torn fabric, social fabric, and also the, the, the recapture of our confidence, the recapture of our identity, the recapture of our responsibility, economically, infrastructure-wise, and, and socially, be able to protect what we had we lost in the past and we have recaptured and the spirit of nationalism okay. is even stronger than it has ever been right. so the remembrance builds us up it doesn't it doesn't tear us up but it builds up all right, thank you very much, Bishop John Ruchahana, for yeah, joining us. And Famida, let me just point out to you the program for tomorrow. We obviously expect international dignitaries to arrive. Uh, some, are ex some are still expected early tomorrow. After that, the first couple will be laying wreaths at the Kigali Memorial Center. We expect the President Paul Kagame to light the remembrance torch, which will ban for 100 days. This is, of course, uh, signifies the 100 days of the genocide, and the event after that will kick off at the Amahara Stadium, Famida. All right, thanks very much. Panina Kariba there in Kigali, just ahead of those commemorations on the 20th anniversary of the Rwandan genocide.